if you're in here just kind of to get a look at what they're like and how to use them and decide if you want to purchase them, that's one reason we're doing this, but also to show people how they can use these, like how to use them. Because some a lot of times people will be brand new to Photoshop or Photoshop elements and hear about these action things and not really know what they do, but they see other people using them, so they buy them. And I'm speaking uh, from experience because I know when I first started with Photoshop Elements, I was like, what are these action things? I want some of these. And then I was like, tell the person, these don't work. Nothing happens when I do this. Well, it took me a while to figure out why. And I'm going to explain that to you. Uh, so we want to educate you on how to use the product. And also give those who are interested in purchasing it a really good preview of all the things you can do with the set and how the set functions. And I'll be showing it in Photoshop for the most part and then Photoshop Elements as well. And I am recording this. I will take questions, uh, not until the end. And what I'll do is I'll scroll through and I'll pick the ones that the group as a whole would benefit from. I'll read it out loud and I repeat. And so I'll read it out loud so you know what the question is and then I'll answer it. I am using Photoshop CC, but these work in Photoshop, I mean, um, CS3, CS4, CS5, CS6. Did a CS6 come out? I can't remember. I think it just went to CC, didn't it? No, there was a CS6. I forget. It all runs together, and I did own them all, um, but it does just run together. So, but I'm using Photoshop CC, and then I will also use Elements 12. And I know there's more current Elements, but this is the one I have on this laptop, and it really hasn't changed. So I'm using, uh, I'll show it on Elements 12 as well. All right. Okay. All right. So let's get started. And I've been playing with some images here. I do want to, to uh, before I begin, if you're new to Photoshop and you're looking and you're saying, wait a minute, mine does not look like hers. What's going on? I have altered mine um, to be, and I know it has been darker in the past. So if you're seeing it um, look different, let me make sure edit. Let's see what my preference is. There we go. And. Um, you go through, and there's somewhere in here, there we go, in the interface, in the preferences, okay, so on a Mac, go to Photoshop CC and down to preferences, on a PC, go to edit and preferences, and yours might, yours probably looks like this, because I think that's the default, at least it was for CS5 and CS6, if there was a CS6, again, I forget, um, so I think it was dark, uh, they may have gone back to the light, but I changed mine, so don't be alarmed if your mine does not look like yours. So it's in the appearance. So it's interface, appearance, and hit OK. The other thing you should know is that these little panels that um, how they are when you first install, those can be moved around. All right. And so if you're thinking, how did she get this thing out here? You just click on the panel and drag it out. OK. And to get it back nested into a little section, just take it over there, hover around until you see a box, a line go all the way around it, and then drop it down. Okay, so, and I'll, I'll do that again at the end, but I know a lot of people sometimes are like, how did you get your workspace to look like that? And I just want to make sure that's clear. And I just move things around because I'm on a MacBook Air, a 13-inch MacBook Air, and so my workspace is really small, and I try and move things as, um, as I need to. So when I'm working on this picture, I'm probably going to put this back up here um, in with that. All right. Um, okay. So let me go back to, so we're working with this image. This is straight out of the camera. Okay. And once you load your actions and loading actions in, in Photoshop is beyond simple. Okay. Because really all you have to do is double click on the file. All you have to do is double click on the file and your Photoshop will open up. And when I say the file, I mean the one that says .atn, okay, .atn, double click on it. Or when you're in here in your actions panel, if you don't know where your actions panel is, go to window and then actions and your action panel will pop open. 
So right now, say it's lost. You know, it's gone. It's closed up. And I, I'll tell you this. The first time I had the first photo shop, I had think I had CS3. And my action, uh, somehow this happened. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I went on to some forums. And I lost all my actions. And I did it. It's window and actions. And there we go. So they pop back up. So don't be alarmed if all of a sudden your action panel's gone. You feel like you've lost all your actions. You haven't. They're there. Go to window and actions. All right. I, if it happens to me, it has happened. It's going to happen to somebody else out there. And uh, don't you just know that it happens to a lot of people. OK, so if you're in here, too, you can load them um, when you're in the actions tab. There's a little uh, triangle with some lines. Click on that and come down to load actions and then your Windows Explorer or your Mac Finder will open up and you just navigate to where the file is and click on the .atn file and they will load. Okay, so this is what they look like. So here it is, the, and it's, it's one folder, Pretty Actions, Pure, and then you click on the triangle, and then we have some things. Now, some of these are non-working. They're just kind of just to give some separation. Okay, so here's the color workflow, just some little, mm -hmm, just little doodads here, and then uh, perfect start action. So this is a header of this section, and there are several perfect start actions, just a good, good things you might use to give yourself a clean edit. A clean edit is making the image look as good as possible, yet still look like it came out of the camera that way. Okay, so when somebody looks at your picture, they think, man, they got a great camera. <laughs> oh, doesn't everybody hate that? All right, <laughs> they're going to think, man, she's a brilliant photographer. He is a talented photographer. He knows what he's doing. So that's what we're hoping, you know, people will think. And so that's a clean edit. A uh, creative edit is where we give it some special colors or looks where it, it has been altered, um, say like an urban or vintage, uh, black and white, those kind of matte, those are going to be creative edits. Okay. So with this image, it's a beautiful image straight out of the camera. And I do encourage you, um, actions and so Photoshop and Lightroom really should be used to make your images pop to polish your image. Uh, you shouldn't constantly be, um, correcting for severe mistakes made in camera. So go back and practice with your camera. I know I had to do that when I first got started as well. Like, okay, spent a lot of time editing. Let me go back to the camera. So go back to the camera, try and get a well exposed image. That's priority, you know, in focus, of course, um, white balance as good as you can. And then you have a nice um, starting point and editing will be much faster when your image looks great coming out of camera. These are not my images, by the way, a lot of these are Jesse Blake and some other photographers and I'm not real sure. So whoever this is, if I've not mentioned to you, I really apologize. It's a gorgeous picture. So this one, I'm just going to brighten it a little bit. I'm going to use the perfect start actions for that. And all you do is you, you just click on the one you want and then come and hit the play button. And that's the triangle down here. I'm going to hit play. So we see it play in our layers panel. If you're not seeing your layers panel, go up to window and then layers. Okay. The beauty of Photoshop is in the layers in the layers. There's no layering in, pre, in Lightroom. There is layering in Photoshop and it is brilliant and so useful. And so you, you want to be able to see your layers panel because some of these actions you may want to go into. They're, most of them are created as groups and you can click the triangle and then you can see the individual layers inside the group. So for some of them, we may say, okay, we do want to keep the contrast, or if it added too much contrast, we can turn it off. See, I turned it off by clicking the eyeball. Turn it back on, or I can lower it down. So when you're working in Photoshop with layers, we have opacity, which is how much of the effect we see. So if we make it 100%, and there's different ways you can change your opacity, one way is click on the little triangle and move the slider up. The other way is just to hover over the word and notice that a little hand with a right and left arrows come up and just click and drag one way and click and drag the other way. OK, 
Okay, so we can lower the opacity of the layer we're on. So right now we're on the keep contrast layer. So if the contrast was too much for your particular image, then you can lower it down or make go back up. I, I want it. So we have color boost. We can kind of turn that off, turn it back on. We might say, hey, we, we'd like more of that. So I can increase that a little bit. Come in here, turn off the tone, turn it back on. I like it. It's already 100%. I can't go above that. But you can always reduce it if, if you feel like it's too strong for your image. And then we have lighten up. Turn it off. Turn it on. And um, I can increase it if I want more of it. Now, I'm going to go through some fundamentals with this very first action. With actions, with layers in Photoshop, not only are layers fantastic because, as the name says, they're layers and we can layer them on top of each other, but we also have masks where we can hide some of the effect, some or all of the effect. So here I have this white mask, and with mask in Photoshop, a white mask is saying, hey, I'm an open book. Everything, all the change I have, you can see. But we can use a brush, a black brush, to conceal some of the change in particular areas. And I have my brush. This is the brush tool. And make sure it is just the brush, not a brush with a little effect. Okay, we want just the brush tool. And then down here, this tells me what color my brush is. And right now it's black. Now I flipped it and it's white. Well, a white brush and a white mask is not going to do anything for me because white is always uh, revealing. It's always showing us something. And black, if I change to black, this black brush is concealing it for us. So now when we use brushes, we have a brush opacity. So just like we had layer opacity, where we can lower down how much of the change we see, we also have it for brush opacity up here. So we can lower how much we want to conceal. So I might say, I like the effect, but I feel like I want to conceal a little bit over her. And so I'm going to lower it down to about 38%. And now I'll make my brush a little bigger. And, and I know if you're, if you're here and you're, you've been using Photoshop for a while, I'm going to go over some very basic things because we have a lot of people who've come in who've just started with Photoshop CC and, and I want to cover some basics. Okay. So the brush is a circle, and we can make it smaller or bigger by using the bracket keys on our keyboard. Now if you look down at your keyboard to the letter P, P is in Paul, and then look to the right. There are two bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it bigger, and the left, left bracket key makes it smaller. You can also change the size up here, okay, right in there. Can change the size but honestly it can be time-consuming to come up here and change that so I would recommend using the bracket keys and if you're going to cover a fairly sizable amount make the brush bigger uh, I have helped people before where they have this little bitty brush and they're trying to do a lot of work I'm like just make your brush bigger you're gonna save yourself time so make my brush bigger and I'm just gonna brush over her face a little bit because I just want to conceal some of that brightness because it's a little hazy and I don't want to lose the contrast and then we can see where I brushed right there can you see that it's kind of gray so I concealed just a little bit of it and we're going to go over that again okay now I close this group back up this is a group just by clicking the triangle we can turn it off again to see what it was like before turn it back off now when we turn this eye off we're deactivating this layer and if you want to keep the effects, then we need to keep that activated. Okay. Now, now maybe I want to add some contrast. So I'm going to click and go play, add some contrast. We can open it up and see if oh, we have a boost and we have a contrast. All right. I like both of them. There we go. I like it. Now, if I feel like I'm losing some of her hair, it's getting too dark. Again, I can use, you know, it's before I, I came into the layer and mask. Here, I can use the mask on the group and say, oh, I want to conceal some of that right here in her hair. And I'm going to use a black brush. And I might increase it a little bit here. 
Come on. My brush got stuck. There we go. Okay, so now I'm concealing it right there. You can barely see it. Maybe I'll get right here too. I really like the clarity and it does what it says. It just it clarifies, it makes things, just brings it, it's not a sharpener. Well, it kind of brings it in focus better. Um, it's like an edge definer is what it is. And I'm going to zoom in so we can kind of see it. I'm zooming in with Command plus the Command key and the plus key. I'm holding this. I click one and the Command key, then I click the plus key. On a That's on a Mac. On a PC, you would hit the Control key. Control plus. The plus up there at the top of the keyboard. When I want to move around my image, I hold down my space bar and drag. Click and drag down. Okay, so we zoomed in a little bit. I'm going to turn it off. So there's before and there's after. Now again, it kind of darkened her hair, and if I don't want, if I don't want to lose that all of her hair, then I might conceal some of it with the black brush. My brush is black. Got it right here, so I might conceal some of that. If we feel like it's a little too much, we can lower the opacity down. Command minus to back out. Okay. So back out. Now, make it warmer. And I tend to, my images a lot of times are too, a little too cool. If I'm using auto white balance, it just is very cool. And so I tend to use the warming actions or presets if you're if I'm in Lightroom. I, I need to do that because my images are usually too cool. And we can open it up and we see warm light and warmth. And we can increase that or decrease it. So I might say, it's a little strong. This image is already kind of just a tad warm to start with, so I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. And I like the warm light. You could say, okay, I want more of that. It just depends on what you want. So tailor this. These actions need tailoring. Go in, go in and um, lower opacity, increase opacity. Use the mask to conceal some areas. Okay, we can make it cooler, which we won't. Fresh shadows. This kind of just um, play it for you to see. Kind of um, brightens up the shadows a little bit. Like that. And then the highlights kind of tone down those highlights. But we don't, I don't want to do that here. So I kind of like the fresh shadows. It kind of gives them a nice light, bright air to it. Lower down the opacity a little bit. Tame color cast. We really don't have any in here. Um, maybe her thumb's a little red right there, but this one is an overall one. I'm going to play it. There's another color cast one that is for specifics. Okay. So with the tame color cast, they tell us in the action layer, open. So you need to open this one. Definitely. These other ones you can open or they're fine as is. This one, you have to open it to use it. See, they're all off. The the group is on, but all these individuals are off. So if overall we have some color cast going on, and a lot of times this happens. So like green cast, if, if you're out in a in a and they're laying in the grass, you'll get some green cast on their face, or um, they're next to red brick. A lot of times the side of the face can be red. So this is overall ones, and I'm just gonna I just let's just see. Let's turn on the tame yellow cast one. All right, and nothing really happened. We don't have any yellow cast there. Let's try Tame Red. Now, watch, see what happened. So down here, Tame Red cast, I'm going to turn it off. So there's before and there's after. So it kind of just pulled the red out of the picture. And you can try it, and you might say, oh, okay, well, I actually kind of like that. But let's lower it down some. But I, 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 did, I want it nice and warm, so I'm going to turn it back off. But th these are... These are global ones. You might turn it on and you like it everywhere but a particular spot, and that's when you'd use a black brush. Brush on that area you want to hide it or conceal it, and, and then you can go on down the road. Now, I didn't use this action. Do you have to leave a layer in your layers panel if you don't even use it? Nope, you can delete it. It's really easy to delete. Just hit the delete key. So I just hit the delete key and it went away. 
All right, do color boost. There isn't a whole lot of color in this image. Um, it did definitely boost the colors here in the tree. And I don't really like what it did to her face area. So I'm gonna, I still have my brush and it's black and I'm gonna conceal it on her. Okay. Selective color boost. And this one's gonna have some message for us. And I'm just kind of going through and the other pictures we edit, I'll be faster with. All right, this action will enhance existing colors that are already occurring in your image. Open the folder in your layers panel and click on the little box or eye next to the color you want to boost or enhance. Click the box again to turn off the enhancement. Okay, so we need to open this one. So now we get to pick what colors would we like to boost. This one again doesn't have a whole lot of color in it except for these oranges and yellows, so let's see what happens here. Boost yellows. Ooh, it really brought those to life, didn't it? The greens. Okay, did make that little greener down there. We don't have any blues. We have some magenta just right there. Um, do we want to boost the reds? Mm -mm. Okay, now even doing the yellows, <coughs> I don't. I did a little something because there's yellow in her skin, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess with her skin, so I'm going to conceal it. Conceal more of it. I'm going to close this back up. We can see how much we've done to the picture so far. If you come to the background, this is our starting point, and hover over the little eyeball on the background. Hold down your, um, on a PC, your Alt key. On a Mac, your Option key, and click. And it turns off all the layers at once. So this is before, and that's after. And we haven't made it out of the perfect start action set yet um, section. All right, mute a color. We can mute the color. We can kind of shift the green color a little bit if we want. I'm going to skip those. All right, the retouch. I love the re I love the skin softening one. It is so good. And all you do is click and play. Click and play. Then you're going to use a white brush. So we've been using a black brush on white masks. Remember the white, it's an open book. It's showing you everything. It's revealing all of its changes. And we used a black brush to conceal or hide those areas we don't want to have that effect show through. With the skin smoothing one, it tells us paint with a soft white brush to reveal smooth, creamy skin. And we're going to hit continue. So now we've got a black mask. Down here at the bottom of our layers panel, if you can't see where I'm at here. And notice all these other ones were white because the, the change was an open book. It was just showing us everything. This change is hidden, and we have to reveal it. And remember how I said when I first got started with actions, and I'd run an action, and I'd e I email. It was actually, um, I, I've become friends with her now, but I emailed her and said, um, this action's not working. <laughs> and I was just so new. So you have to use a white brush, all right? You have to use a brush to, um, and like they said, they say they, um, the message was painting. We're going to kind of paint on. So I'm zooming in. All right. And I am going to, I seldom use 100% brush opacity when I'm, working with the skin or the face at all, because I can always go up. And when I'm working with 100%, I'm, 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 you know, I'm at the end of the line. So I like to give myself the flexibility of, of using less. Okay, so my brush is active, and it switched to a white brush, which is great. But if your brush is a black brush, just hit X on your keyboard, X. X will flip it from black to white. If it is some other color, say red or blue or purple, whatever, just hit D. D for default, D on your keyboard, and it will flip it to be black and white. If the black is on top, hit X. And all X does is flip it back and forth. All right, so 
Now I'm going to brush and make my brush smaller with the bracket key. I'm using the left bracket key to make it smaller. Okay, right bracket key to make it bigger. Now I'm going to show you another little trick because I like to see where I'm going. And I don't have a fancy name for it other than calling it the red screen trick. I know it's a very high tech name, isn't it? If you look at your delete key or your inner key, your return key, so there's a key in between those two. Um, it Well, depending on your keyboard, on my MacBook, it's between the delete key and the return key. But definitely look at your return key, return key and the key right above it is this diagonal slash key and or just an up down uh, vertical slash so we want to click that and once you click that it's right above the enter or return key now our screen is red and wherever I brush will turn this pistachio color like a pistachio white almost and what that does it just allows me to see where I've brushed so that I am more effective with my brushing and it's not a guessing game all the red does is allow me to see more effectively where I'm brush and I make my brush bigger or smaller with the bracket keys I'm going to leave alone the eyes and uh, the lips and then I'll lower the opacity of the brush a little bit and, and get her neck Sometimes I will try and get a little bit of the over the eyes, um, but not too much. Okay, so now to turn that off, I just hit that diagonal key again, and now it's off. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. And so I'm going to turn the, the layer off so we can see before. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, so there's before, and there's after. Before, after. If you hit an area, if you accidentally, so I'm going to turn this back on. Let's say I, I got into her eye a little bit. What you do, so remember the white brush is revealing. This is revealing uh, the change underneath. There's a blurry image Underneath this white mask and black mask, the black mask is concealing it for us, and we have to draw out the change with a white brush. So, if we hit an area, so I'm gonna hit an area on the lip here I didn't mean to hit, okay? What I can do is switch to a black mask, hit, I mean, black brush, apologies, a black brush, and then I'm gonna make it a hundred percent. So, I want to cover up a hundred percent of this change, and now I just brush back where it was, okay? So if you hit an area you didn't mean to, just get the opposite brush. So if we want to hide that change, we use a black brush. Okay. Um, cheeks and lips. Paint with a soft brush to reveal uh, pretty pink cheeks. Lower the opacity when painting over lips. And with this one, we really don't need to because... I mean, she's got um, definitely enough lipstick. I like it. it's very dramatic. Um, she doesn't really, we can't see much of her cheeks here. You know, she's facing right towards us. If we want to use it, I would use a low opacity. And let's see, just a little bit. We can see it there. So I'm going to turn it off before, after. And if you did a little too much, you can just lower the opacity of the layer instead of deleting and starting over. I'm sure you could kind of do that with eyeshadow as well a little bit. All right. I am also going to do the eye sparkle. This one, her eyes are very, very dark, but we, we can add a little bit to the um, catch lights. So I'm just going to hit the run and we'll do this. Okay, so open the folder. So there's different things we can do. And I'm going to open it up, open the group or the folder, and we can make bold catch lights. We can lighten the iris. 
bold lashes, add contrast, add clarity. All right, so what I'm going to do is do bold catch lights. And we're just going to brighten up her catch lights just a little bit. And remember this black mask, it's hiding it. It's hiding it. And we want to draw it out with a white brush. So I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. Make my brush nice and small and just brush over her catch lights just a little bit. We're really not going to be able to lighten her iris. Her, eye, her eyes are probably very, very dark. Um, eye clarity, if we want to sharpen the eyes up a little bit. You can do that. This is um, this. She's pretty distant in the picture, but it's a little soft, and the eyes really. It's, it's going to be okay. Bold lashes. We already have nice bold lashes. Add contrast. We don't need to use those for this particular image. So I'm going to back up a little bit. White and teeth and eyes. Now again, her eyes are nice and white. I will use that one in a different one. I'm going to save time here. Keep going. Okay, so. Let's take a look at where we are just with the perfect start actions. Backing up, backing up. There we go. Before, after. And I'm going to take a snapshot. It's in your history panel. If you don't know where your history panel is, go to Windows and go down to History. and. I mean the window, not windows, window, and then history. And at the bottom of your history panel, there is a little camera, and you can click snapshot. And what's nice about this is you can name it. So I'm going to double click on it and do clean edit. Clean edit. There is an action down here in the um, towards the bottom where if you're not sure how to make a snapshot, they have it for you under workflow snapshot of layers and you just click on it and hit play and it does the same thing and it's very very handy for when I don't have I don't want it to be bouncing around between history and actions panel okay so we've got lots of different things we've done here and now we can go on and do some other things with like the color adding a little bit more to this image Okay, so this is a clean edit. It's nice and bright and airy, isn't it? And then we have the pretty color actions. And there is a play all where you can click and it plays all of them. So you can just go down and turn off what you want. Um, let's go ahead and do that. It just takes time. I'll do this one time. There's a play all as well in the elements version. It doesn't mean you should play them all. Just because it's, it's there doesn't mean, I mean, it doesn't mean you should use them all. You can play them all, but you're going to turn off um, ones that don't suit your image. And each of them have a black and white version, which I love. I love, love, love that. Making my Photoshop work here. Okay, it's still going. Once you, this is good for when you're first getting familiar with the set. You can play all of them. You can just go through and turn them off. But then you'll get an idea of what each one does and what each one looks like. And so you won't, you won't feel the need to do the play all. And you'll just go straight to the action you want. And when I say the play all, it's only playing the ones in the pretty color section, okay? There is um, pretty color base, pretty color times two, airy and light, naturally yours, color me pretty, velvet color, subtle drama, subtle drama, daring punch, perfectly matte, elegant, uh, dainty sable, honeysuckle, and rhapsody. So I'm going to go through each of those. And again, I've, I'm really working it here. Depending on your computer, this will go faster than others. So my PC desktop, which is actually sick and at the computer doctor still, um, it would go very, 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 very fast. This is a stronger computer than this laptop. So this laptop is taking a little bit more time.
And I'm sorry, I should not have done it. Again, mine's just slower, and I've got a lot going on right now. I've got a lot open. I've got elements in Photoshop open. Okay. All right. Okay, so have fun. You click on what, what you want. So each one of my, like I said, has a black and white version. So now we can just go through and turn on each one, so the pretty color base. Now, again, this one doesn't have a bunch of color in it, so it's not necessarily a great, a great example for what actions that have a color shift, okay, because there's not a lot of color in this one. So that's the pretty color base. Um, pretty color times two. Airy and light, which I love. I love the airy and light. Now, notice that each one has a black and white, so I can turn on the black and white as well. Okay, so there's the airy and white when I turned it to black and white. I'm going to turn off that, okay, naturally yours. Got a little delay going on. There's my little rainbow wheel. All right. It's catching up with me. Okay, so naturally yours. Color me pretty. Now, if it causes intense color and you like it everywhere, but except for your per your subject, remember we the group has a layer mask and we can hide it. So if I wanted to use that, I could. Velvet color. I'll play a few of these on these other ones. All right, um, subtle drama. I love subtle drama. I love airing light. Subtle drama is often my favorite. Uh, daring punch. Perfectly matte. Elegant. Dainty sable. Rhapsody, that one's beautiful too. And Honeysuckle, and I really like Honeysuckle too. I like them all. All right, so let's say I want to, um, I'm just going to do Rhapsody, and I'm going to just all at once highlight all these and delete them, and I'm just going to run Rhapsody. Okay, now I might say it's a little strong, maybe just a little bit, and so I can lower down if I choose to. I could hide it and you know on her a little bit if I wanted to. I don't want the black and white version, so I'm just going to delete that. Okay, so we have gone from that is before, after. Isn't that beautiful. Then there's toners and add-ons, color infusions. Soft hazy combos, rich matte, lush film, clean mist, center light, soft vignette, dark vignette, and bow tilt shift. And they all do exactly what they say they're going to do. So, no, except for lush film, I'll tell you that that one is different. And on some of them, I think it's beautiful and I love it. And the other ones, I'm like, eh, I'll take it off. So, try lush film. I really often like it on the image. And, and there's only one, so of, like I was playing with ten different photos. There's only one I didn't like it on. So it's just and actions like presets are not one size fits all. You're not going to have every single action look perfect on every single picture. Okay, so see, it's just a, it's just a, it's just like this, this film to it. It's just interesting, and and it it really works on some images, and then others not so much. So there it is without it. There it is with it. I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. Um, so there's different things you can do here. 
All right, now let's go into the brushes. Now, when I like the, how they do this with brushes because they're not really that we're installing custom brushes, but they're really effects that we just brush on. We're going to apply on. And these are all going to have black mask because we're going to use a white brush and it's going to reveal wherever we paint on, it's going to reveal something. So if we wanted to paint on um, color rich, you can run it. And it's, it gives you a message. Paint with a soft white brush over areas of your photo to reveal beautiful color pop. Okay, so we've got a black mask. Remember the black saying, hey, something's hidden. There's something special. And we have to use a white mask to find out what that something special is. And I mean, the layer and the action's telling us is not that it's going to be a surprise. Come on. You're sticking. Okay, so I'm going to increase my brush. And I'm just going to brush over these trees right here. All right. Maybe over here. Maybe her. There. So you can see where I painted on in the layer. Okay, so there's lots of different actions. I realize I'm running low on time, so I'll kind of start flying through it. Kind of went slow at the beginning, get fast at the end. And I'm probably going to go to 7.15 at least and then start taking questions. Okay, so what I do want to show is that it's got some really cool extras. Uh, there's some backlight where you, you brush that on. And there's a creamy bokeh brush, I'm going to run that, where it will blur any area you brush on, okay, and it tells you exactly what to do. And pay attention, you know, if you're new to Photoshop, look, and it's going to tell you use a black brush or use a white brush. And so here, told us to use a white brush, soft bokeh. And, you, you know, be careful, you do want it to be look realistic. And here we've got some nice bokeh already, but see how it's going to intensify that if we wanted it to? Again, be careful. You want it to look realistic. Now, that's too strong, isn't it? And you can't suddenly reduce the opacity and have where you brush to be reduced. It doesn't work that way. It's a going forward type thing. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, oops. Go back. Okay. So I'm going to step back. We can use our history to step back. And I'm going to go back to right there. And lower this down so now if I want to use it and just blur it a little bit more it'll look a little more realistic okay this so is already a ton of bokeh to start with all right I've got a little, I've done a lot to this picture okay I'm gonna scroll down what I love to is this movable sun glow so I'm gonna do the warm sun glow and hit play select your move tool in your tools and all you have to do is hit V on your key keyboard V for Victor that's your move tool all right so I'm gonna hit V right now nothing's showing up because my move tool is not activated hit V on your keyboard or it's this one right here at the top and in Photoshop it's helpful if you just go ahead and click on one of the corners and now we can click and drag wherever we want it, we want it to go and since, you know, obviously the light is shining from right here, I'm going to click and drag it right there. We can make it smaller. We can make it bigger. So it's just what you want it to be. Now this one already had it built in. I'm going to show another one where we add it, and it's just a lovely effect. Okay. Um, then we can do a snapshot of the layers, like I said. Uh, we can revert to the original. We can flatten. So when we're done, if we're all done editing, then we flatten and save our picture. Now, if you feel like you want to come back and be able to manipulate these layers some more, you're going to want to save it as an open, open layers. Okay. And what that allows you to do is when you save it, you're going to save it as a PSD. See up here, PSD, I had saved it as a PSD. And if you open it tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now, all these layers are going to show back up. And I'll tell you, I really only save the layers um, when I have done a lot of editing. Say it's a newborn she's, and the baby's got jaundice, has a lot of blemishes, a lot of little milk flakes. I've done a lot of little things to fix it. Then I save the, the layers. I'll save it as a PSD and then I'll flatten it and save for print. But if I have, it would just took me a few, you know, click, 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 brush, brush, click.
I don't bother saving the PSD. Those files are really big, and I have got to tell you, I am on a hard drive shortage. So um, I do not uh, personally save every single edit as PSD that I do in Photoshop. All right, now, how do you save it as a PSD? Super simple. Number one, leave the layers open, don't flatten. Come up to File, Save As. All right, and down here, Format needs to be Photoshop. If you have P PC, don't, you know, wherever it might say File Type, I think, and just click Photoshop. And, or it might say .psd, that's what it might say. Make sure you have layers checked. Okay, and now I'm just going to do, I'm going to do number two here. Okay, because I've already done it once. and hit Save. So now I have another version with layers open. And I can close this down, open back up, and all these layers will be here. If I'm ready to print, uh, then we'd flatten. And is there's an action right in here, and I can hit. Actually, I'm going to do a snapshot real quick. I'm going to do a snapshot, hit play. It's done a snapshot for me. Go to your history panel to access the snapshot. And then I'm going to hit flatten. There's a lot of layers, so it may take a while. If you have one where you have deactivated the little eyeball next to it, you're going to get a message. Would you like to discard hidden layers? And if you deactivated it because you don't want it, then you're going to choose yes. You want to discard the hidden layers. If you hit no, then it's going to flatten those layers and leave you one little um that, that one that was hidden, it'll be up above it and be open there. Okay, so a snapshot of your layers has been stored in your history panel should you need to access your layer. So when we flatten, it has already done that for us. We'll come to our history, come up here. Here's that snapshot of it. There it is with it. Um, let's go to the clean up. To the, there's straight of the camera. And there is our layers before we flattened. Before, after. Now, I'm going to tell you, this one probably is beyond the clean edit right here because, you know, I don't know of any photographer or any camera that's going to have a picture coming out just like that. This is our clean edit, and that's our creative. Come back to the flatten. Okay. So once I have flattened it, then I can resize it for the web, or I can sharpen for print. So let's say I want to resize it for the web. This is a horizontal, or it's also called a landscape orientation. I'm going to click and hit play. Okay, so now it has resized it for the web, and you can tell because we're now at 100%. And yes, it's zoomed in, but it's at 100%. And it has added some sharpening, and my brush has gotten really big because the, the brush size I was using was for a, for a full-size resolution, and now we're at a much smaller resolution, so that brush size is enormous compared to that. Okay, so I'm going to pull it down, and it's added some sharpening. And why it has left a layer out for us with that sharpening is so that we could hide some of the sharpening if it's doing some bad things. So maybe if it's making wrinkles accentuated or makes the hair look like straw, then we could use this mask with a black brush and conceal it. So I might say, I don't want to sharpen the hair. We don't need the hair sharpened. So I could conceal it over, over that or over the skin. A lot of times what you do want sharpened is, you, you know, a lot of times like, Articles of clothing, especially if there's nice detail in a dress, a wedding dress, something like that. Definitely want the eyes to be sharpened, mouth, no, the nostrils, those things, you know, it's good to have those in focus or be sharp. Okay, so now we can just flatten it. Now you can do flatten again, but this action is creating a snapshot, which I don't necessarily need. So how you flatten on your own, a really simple way. There's multiple ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. This is one of the ways to flatten. Go up to Layer and Flatten. I just find that's easiest for new users. Layer, Flatten. And now we would save this. I'm going to do um, Save As. Now I don't want it to be Photoshop. I'm going to do a JPEG. And 
gonna come out here. I'm gonna do web. I can rename it what I want it to be, and hit save. And quality of 10 really is as is, is good as you need. Quality 10. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do one more picture quickly here in Photoshop. I'll show you some edits I did, and then I'm going to do one in Photoshop Elements, and I'll take questions. All right. So I'm just come to this one right here. All right. Here's another one. And I'm just playing around with some different edits. There's before. And there's after. Um, that's before honeysuckle. Let's see, that's after honeysuckle. Added just a little bit of a tone to it. All right. Here is um, clean edit and a sun glow. So I added that. That's that movable sun glow. And I added it to that one. I can always go back and reposition it by hitting V on my keyboard or just clicking on the move tool so I can make it bigger. All right, we can come around here. There is a mask built in. So if, if our sun, little, little sun star here, whatever it is, sun glow, if it's getting on our person, we can use the mask. Now, when you're using, when you're moving around this sun glow, it's something you need to understand. When you're moving it around, it's going to be on that sun glow effect. See the outline? If we want to use the mask, utilize the mask to hide it over a person. So let me let me make it nice and big here. So it's you see how it's getting on her, and I don't want it on her. I need to click on the mask. So now the mask is active. And I'm going to use a brush. And my my foreground color is black, which it should be. I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard, B for brush, and I'm just going to reduce the opacity to about, for the brush opacity, so I'm hiding about 59% of it, all right, so maybe that was too much, so I'm going to back up, I back up one step by doing Command Z, or Control Z, Z is in zebra, that takes you one step back, and maybe I want to conceal less of it, there we go. Because the last nice thing is you can always keep clicking and it, it'll do more. It'll conceal more. It's cumulative. You can always reduce the opacity of it, lower it down a little bit. Here is, there's straight out of the camera. So before, after. I made a group. So I did, I ran different actions. I ran different actions, and then I made a group. And how you can do that, let me show you. Let me come. Oh, okay. I know this is not the one I wanted. Did it must have closed down? Hang on. There we go. Okay, so see all these layers I have? Lots and lots and lots of layers, right? Lots of layers. What we can do is say my clean edit, the ones that I use to create a clean edit, I am going to click on that one, hold down my shift key, and click on the last one in the process of making it a clean edit. And then I'm going to hit Command G or Control G. G is in group. And it makes it a group, and then I can label it Clean Edit. And it just can tidy up your, so you can have groups within groups. And just tidies up your layer panel a little bit. Okay. Here is another one. Um, I'll turn this off. So that is before. It's straight out of the camera this way. And then the clean edit. And I didn't do too much. Let's see, I didn't even do the skin or anything on this one. So this is just exposure, clarity, make it warmer, um, color boost, a little bit of a green shift, except for I masked off of her. Okay, I didn't want her to get it. And I made a group. And then we can do honeysuckle. I like that. Before. After. Now I can come in here. I can still come in here and uh, work on her skin and and do that. So 
Um, oops, I'm gonna close this up. So I can still run uh, actions, and I can come in here, pull this down, and do the oh so soft skin. Now I'm gonna teach another trick. This is not in here. So a lot of times this has this has a lot of what you need. Um, I do need to show you the the color cast one, but what it doesn't have is something for the under eye circle because honestly there isn't any one great action for under eye circles. But I'm gonna show you a great trick. So first let me do the skin so soft here and make my brush smaller. Turn on my little mask. That's the, it's not a mask really, it's just the red screen. And increase my brush opacity to about 66%, but it's gotta be white, right now it's black. So I'm gonna hit X on my keyboard. So I'm doing the same thing I have been doing, nothing new. This is repetition. Repetition is fantastic when you're learning something new. Or even if you've learned it before, that repetition, each time we hear it, we learn, we, you know, we pick up even more and more and more. The first time I went to Photoshop World, I sat there thinking, I know most of all this. And then I went again, and the next year I thought, I'm going to have an open mind. I'm really going to pay attention instead of tuning out thinking, I know all this. And I was so surprised at all the little tidbits I picked up, and it made the trip much more worth it. I'm also going to get her arm here a little bit. She's got some, a little bit there. Okay. So a smooth skin. Now, she's got a little bit of under eye circle, right? And I'm going to show you a really cool trick. And it's very simple and it's very, very fast. And I'm zooming in with Command Plus. So first thing you want to do is create a blank layer. Blank layer is just, it's down at the bottom and it looks like a piece of paper with a corner turned over. So we got a blank layer. Now, you're going to hit I on your keyboard. I eye for eyedropper, or you can click on the eyedropper. Now I'm gonna click on her under eye circle so you can see. You see how dark that color is? The inner circle there is the color. It's real dark and we can see it. See how dark it is? Now I'm gonna click on skin outside of that area. See how much lighter that skin is? So this is what I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click on the light skin. So now my foreground, so any anything we brush, any brushing we do, We'll have this color. We'll have this pink. So now I'm going to hit B. B for brush. I'm going to lower my brush down. And I am recording. You can go back and watch this later. And so I have my opacity about 30%. Now I'm just going to brush over her eye. Don't worry. It is too strong. I'm going to fix it. Now I'm going to do I. I'm going to do the other side. Click on a good, good color area. Hit B. And I went a little too far. So I'm going to step back. And just brush right here. I'm gonna hit I, click right here, B. Okay, now it's too much, and it always is. So I always reduce it down to like 30 something percent, like that. Now I'm gonna turn it off. So there's before, and there's after. It just does just enough. It's just enough. Just enough. So that's the under eye circle. Her eyes have great clarity. We could definitely do the, but we could always, you know, do a little bit of a sparkle, add a little more sharpness to it. Remember with this one, you need to open it up. It tells you to open it. And I'm going to go right to eye clarity. Zoom in, Command Plus, and make my brush smaller. Make my opacity a little bit more here. Beautiful blue eyes she has. Catch lights are, are bright enough. Her eyes and teeth, the whites of her eyes and her teeth are, are plenty. Um, if we wanted to, we could add some color to her cheek, her lips, but I, I really like, I think overall, if her makeup is pleasing. I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. So we'll come in here and let's say before. After. Before. And after. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
then this one here, I just did a quick clean edit. So there's before and there's after. I already did her under eye circles. If you feel like she needs a little more brightening, um, I'm just going to come down here and instead I'm going to use one of these color ones that add um, light. So we could do Subtle Drama. Adds a nice center light. It's lovely, isn't it? Um, or we could, there's Arian Light. I really like it. Okay. Um, I think I went through all of them. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to do Photoshop Elements. So here is um, an image. And in Photoshop Elements, you have an Actions panel as well. If you don't can't find it, go Window, Actions. Everything in Elements is very much like regular Photoshop, just less of it. Or, you know, but you're going to find things in the same place. We just don't have as many options, see? Not as many options under the window a menu as in Photoshop. Um, actions, you can't install actions like you can in Photoshop in that you can't double, just double click on it in your Windows Explorer or Mac Finder. You actually have to install it by going to the Actions panel, clicking on the little icon in the far right corner, and then go Load Actions, and then your Mac Finder or Windows Explorer will pop up and you just locate the .atn file and load it. But we have all the same things here, all the same, all the same. And uh, the thing to know, so there's before, there's after. I added a little bit more light. I added the little sun thing here on that one. The thing to know about Photoshop Elements is that while you can group things in Elements, you have to, um, you don't get to just click and open a, you know, click a little triangle and it opens the folder up. It doesn't work that way. So if I ran an action like clean contrast, and in the other, in Photoshop, I can just click and open this folder up. I can't do that here, not as easily. So there's an action at the bottom, at the bottom, and it says open folder. So you have to click on the one that's uh, grouped. So there's, it's a group. There's a folder. But then you have this little pencil with a line through it saying, nope, can't get in there. But we can if we click on open folder and hit play. And it's telling you, you first have to be on this. And it's a layer group. These are called layer groups. I'll hit continue. So now it opened it up for me. And I have boost and contrast. All right. And it's already at 100%, but I, and I didn't really need to done that. I just wanted to illustrate it to you. All right. Um, so this one's nice and airy and bright. If we wanted to darken it, there is a darken um, up here at the top. If we wanted to darken it, but let me come in. To about. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. It needs to just tone down a little bit. And we'd have to open it up a little bit more to mess with it. Open folder. Okay. Now, I'm going to show that I did what I didn't show in this other one is the individual cast one. So she has some redness on her cheeks, doesn't she? And there is one under the brushes. Paint off color cast. So I'm going to hit play. Okay. To open it, hit continue. We've got to go down and open the folder up. Okay, so now we got tame blue cast, tame yellow cast, tame green, tame magenta. I'm going to click on tame red. 
It's a black mask. So the change is hidden from us. I have to reveal it with a white brush. My brush, my color is black and I need it to be white. So I'm gonna hit X on my keyboard. All the, all the keyboard shortcuts, if you have Photoshop Elements and you've been hearing all these little keyboard shortcuts, they apply um, in Photoshop as well as Photoshop Elements. Now my brush tool is not active right now. My move tool is active. So I just hit B on my keyboard, just like you would in Photoshop. So my brush tool is activated now. And I'm going to do about 70% brush opacity. And I'm going to brush where it's red. And sometimes it may take two applications. Um, okay. And it might be that it's not. Maybe it's magenta that's the color problem. Sometimes it can look red, but maybe it's magenta. We can see. So there's before the red cast fix. There's after. It pretty much was that. Okay. This one is tricky because she's she's so 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 fair. She's so 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 fair. All right. Okay. So there's before, and there's after. And her little under eyes. I think I already did them, but they still. I did do them, but they are still looking not good. So maybe I'll pull that up a little bit. Still feel like I want to brighten up her face, but she's already so white. All right. So we've gone to 7-11 now. Oh, I actually can get back on here. She's got some redness. All right here. She's kind of red. She's actually still cool. We've warmed up this. I've warmed this image up a lot, but she's still in my opinion, a little cool. All right. And so I could run the warm one again, but I want to save time for questions. All right. My favorite is that one. Okay. Questions, questions. All right. Carol, no, these are not for Lightroom. These are for Photoshop. So we have Adobe Lightroom, we have Adobe Photoshop, and this is Adobe Photoshop. It is in the photographer package. So if you are subscribing under the photographer um, subscription uh, at Adobe, it, you get Photoshop and Lightroom. Okay, so these, these are for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. So I have, it has done it to exposure brighten and I can increase it a bunch and then I can say, well, I only want it to be on her. So I can take this mask and so right now it's showing us everything, right? It's, re it's revealing everything. If you hit while your mask is active, so the little lines have to be around the mask. This works in elements and in Photoshop. Click command or control key. So the control key or command key. So not the control key on the Mac. That control key does nothing for Photoshop or Lightroom. I promise. All right. So the command key on the Mac or controls key on the PC and then the I, I. And it's going to flip it from black, white to black or black to white. And now we could reveal instead. Whoops. So now I could reveal it instead of it showing everywhere. Let's see. This one was just beautiful image. And let's do one overall brightness too. Okay. And a little contrast. Oops, didn't play. Oh, it's, held, it's hung up. Come on. There we go. So we got some contrast, some clarity. This one's just very easy, just a bunch of clicks, and it just took it from, you know, it was a beautiful image, but kind of blah, and it just brought it to life, didn't it? Okay. Okay, how do you open Color Cast, Selective Color Boost, Eye Sparkle? I saw this asked on Facebook. Okay.
How do you open them? Do you mean, Sarah, do you mean in Elements or in Photoshop? So Selective Color Boost, let's do that. Um, actually, let's, okay, we'll just do that one. Selective Color Boost. Uh, here, Selective Sharpen. I may have passed it. Not a good, uh, move too fast for my own eyes here. Selective Color Boost, okay. So I'm gonna click Play. Hit Continue. And then you just open open that up and you turn it on. Uh, so you must mean Photoshop Elements because that one was pretty straightforward. So let's try this Selective Color Boost here. Up here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go down to the bottom. Hit Open Folder PSE. You need to first have the layer group selected, which I do. Oh, there they are. So I could boost. Now this one's not a great example because these colors are so, you know, pale in here. Um, we could boost yellows. We could turn on greens. Um, once you do that, come in here and uh, increase the opacity if you want to. Um, you could turn on, there's no cyans, no blues, no magentas. All right, this one doesn't have a whole lot of color. But I think, so what people were not understanding elements, you have got to scroll down and click on open folder PSE at the bottom. That's what you have to do. Okay. Um, these, Leslie, these were raw files that I did not touch in ACR. So they are hazier. Good, good question. So a JPEG typically will have a little more contrast to them and color but raw files often do have more of a haze and they they need extra attention so that and because that question that answer often leads to another question what's the difference between a jpeg and a raw file so a jpeg file um and a raw and raw files are both file formats that you choose in your camera it's an option so if i choose raw file format and I take a picture, all that data comes into my, com my camera, just comes on in and my camera just hugs it tight and holds on to it. And then when I take that memory card and I put it in my card reader and I plug it in in my computer, all that data comes to my computer. So I have all this information I can work with. If I choose JPEG, whether it's JPEG normal, or, I mean JPEG neutral, JPEG standard, JPEG vivid, JPEG more vivid or whatever your camera says it's going to be in terms of the color. It takes it, so I take a picture with it, that data, all that information comes in, the camera grabs hold of it, and then it says, ah, I don't need that information. Chop, that's gone. Mm, this is not important either. Chop, that's gone. Ah, this needs a little bit of color. Mix up some color, mix up some contrast, mix up some noise reduction and some sharpening, and then there we go. And so when I import that or download that onto my computer, the image is often, most, I mean, always, um, more contrast, more color, a little sharper. Uh, but sometimes, if there are ever any problems, if I have any color cast, if I have any, you know, if the image is underexposed to start with, then I have cemented some problems that can be quite hard to overcome in post processing. So. If you're sitting here deciding, should I shoot raw? Should I shoot JPEG? I would, I would say raw on the safe side because you're get you're you're given all the information and you can manipulate it as you want to. And with actions and with presets, it can be a very fast process. Now that being said, is it terrible to shoot in JPEG? No, it is really a personal preference. And if you feel like you you know you love you like your you love your pictures, you like that it might save you time. Um, then, then go for it. So these images all had a little more haze and stuff because they were raw files that I did not edit in ACR when they came up. Um, and so here we have. So, eh. so Sarah, that or whoever asked that question was a simple question that I gave a big old answer to. <laughs> all right. Okay, I have, this is a question. I have Lightroom and Photoshop Elements 12. I tend to use Lightroom mostly. Should I choose one or is it normal to use both programs to get what I want? If so, which should I use first? All right, April. I think Lightroom and Photoshop Elements 
is a great combination to start with. If those people who have a WCC, you already have Photoshop, might as well use it. All right, so Lightroom Photoshop. File management in Lightroom is absolutely phenomenal. And so I would always recommend importing your pictures into Lightroom, managing them there. However, I have some friends who started in Photoshop. They tried Lightroom. I'm like, listen, I just can't get the groove of it. I use Adobe Bridge for my file management, and that's just the way it's going to be. So for some people, they don't do their file management in Lightroom. They do it in Bridge, and that's okay. You have Organizer, which is a good thing, too. Lightroom is very similar to Organizer. Um, so I'd recommend you doing your file management in Lightroom, do some editing, and I still use um, Lightroom as well. And all you have to do, I'm going to have to close one of these because I will, my computer will not be happy with me. So I'm shutting this down. I'm going to do Lightroom. Okay. So it is so, so easy to take a picture from Lightroom to Photoshop. And a lot of people will do that. They do. They say, they tell me, okay, I manage my files in uh, Lightroom, but I do almost all my editing in Photoshop. And how they do that is that once they have it down in here, they just like grab a bunch, select them, and then right click on it and choose edit in and then Photoshop. Okay. So of course here I've got two showing up here. Great. I love it. Uh, this has been a pickle with Photoshop with uh, CC is they have multiple versions. So let's see. Okay. See, it opened it up so I can edit in here and I can do things. And then all I have to do is hit save and the edit pops back up in Lightroom. So I can do all my different editing in here. Um, I'm going to come down and just do some of these. Um, I love these down here. Okay. Subtle drama. All right. And let's say, you know, I'm happy. I'm just going to flatten it and discard hidden layers. Yep. Okay. So I've done a little edit. And you can do that, those, and then you just do file and then save. And then that edit pops back up in Lightroom. There it is. So we have our original. And we have our edit. And it's just that simple to go from Lightroom back to, to Photoshop. Right click, choose edit in, choose your one. And if you have elements, you can hook it up to Lightroom as well. And you do that in the preferences. So go to your preferences. And it's under the external editing. And you just go through and you choose Photoshop elements. Down here is add additional. So it's got both. I don't know why it's choosing I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. If you have Photoshop, Lightroom naturally picks up that you have it. You don't have to tell it it. You do have to tell it about Photoshop elements. Okay. And Kate, I think, I don't know if you ask it, um, see, another question, how to change it from white to black. Do the, the mask. So how to change the mask from white to black. Command I or Control I. Let me get on one to show that. So... Um, so for clarity, maybe we would only want to clarify her eyes and not the rest of her. And I actually did this on one of my pictures of one of them because it made the hair too, too defined. So click on it and then whether it's white or black, whatever, and then hit, well, you're not going to want to turn a black mask white. I'm going to tell you that's never going to happen ever. <laughs> All right. So, but you may want to turn a white mask black. Because you remember why it's, it's showing us all of it. We might say, we don't want to see it on the entire image. We just want to see it on a particular part of the image. So then you can just hit Command-I or Control-I. And now it's all hidden. So our change, the, the clarified image that is on this layer is hidden. And we can use a white brush to draw out where we want it to be more defined, more clarified. Is there a way I can fix shadows in the face or is it or just or is it just bad line? Is there a way? Okay. Um, you can fix shadows in the face. Let me see if there was. All right. I'm going to use this for an example. There's not really any shadows, but her she's it's just a kind of dark. 
um, let's say we want to brighten up. Let's pretend there's a shadow on one side of her face. We want to brighten this up. Um, one thing I, I, I really like, there is, Um, you have contour, light, and dark. So here we paint on the white, the light, okay? Paint on the light. So we can do that. Or we could come in here and paint on the dark. So if we want to darken up her hair, we could do that. We want to darken up. It's right there. So the contour, light or dark. There's also thought there was also um, maybe that was it. Yeah. There's the overall brightening, which you can also, like I said, turn it. You can, we could play it and then turn it into, no, I uh, love this. And you can also just invert it and now use it with a white brush and paint on the light where you want it. You know, one side of the face is more shadowed than the other. Okay. The action set we're using is the Pure Color Lux. Pure Color Lux. That, and it is um, a phenomenal set that has cleaning actions and creative actions, workflow actions, which I consider clean edit actions, workflow actions, and just a lot. Let's see. Through it. There are 13 perfect start actions, which I use for the most part to do a clean edit. Four in the and the four easy retouch actions. There's 14 color enhancements. So right here, color actions, 14 color enhancements. Nine brushes to add on different things. So you can add on. Um, so add, no, I'm sorry. Nine toners and add-ons. So we can make it a matte, um, clean mist. I love me. I just I love these. I love these all. And then we have brushes, nine curated brushes. So we can paint on color. We can try and fix color cast, add light, take care of some noise, uh, selectively sharpen. Let's see. Um, we've got these backlight and hazy light brushes, the sun glows, which I love those so much. And then some just workflow for um, taking snapshots, flattening, uh, resizing for the web and sizing and sharpening for print and it does a great job doing that it is really a huge huge set